So this short video is just giving an example of how the baby step giant step algorithm is working. Um, this is a copy of how the algorithm is working just to fix notation. G is the generator of some group and the order of G is about m squared or put the other way around. The m is defined as the square root of the order of G and then well, that's typically not an integer so from there we're rounding down. Now as an example I'm choosing the final field of 53 elements and I'm choosing the entire multiplicative group. So a generator of this is um, 2 and um, we're going to look at some target. So somebody else say has a public key 33 and we want to figure out what secret key Alice has. So we want to solve the discrete logarithm problem. Now the first step is to define what m is and as I said m is taking the group order 52 here taking the square root of that, that's 7 point something, and then taking the floor function, so rounding down from that. So 7 point something gets rounded to 7. And so, well, the baby steps ask us to compute a table where we put in the g to the i, comma i. Now on paper or on slides, um, I skip the sorting, so I just write the table with i and g to the i. And this is pretty simple because, well, 53 is larger than 32, so all the way up to 32, I'm just seeing the normal powers of 2 without any reduction. And then I get to 6, and that is, well, I'm taking 32 times 2, that's 64, and that's 11 larger than 53. All right, so then the next step would be I'm reaching, well, this is g to the m minus 1, and I have to reach g to the m. So then my s is the inverse of this g to the n, so g to the 7. And 2 to the 7, well, I'm just, I have already computed g to the 6, so I just need to multiply by g again. So in this case, I multiply by 2, 2 times 11 is 22. There is no reduction about 53 kicking in. And then I use the extended Euclidean algorithm to compute the inverse of 22 modulo 53, and that gives me the 41. In principle, as I said, that would have been the sorting step. Also, in the second step, the giant steps, I wouldn't make a table. I don't need storage for that step, but it is easy for the presentation here. And also, if you're doing this by hand for your homeworks, it is easy to put this into a table. Now, what you're doing here is you're filling in um, numbers, you're computing different values for j, um, until you find a match between the two tables. All right, so at j equals 0, we're looking at s to 0, so that's just 1 times h, and our target h was 33. So the first number we fill in is just 33. And then for the next step, we have a multiplication by s, because now it's s to the 1, and so we're getting 41 times 33, mod 53 is 28. And then, well, we don't have a match for 28 either, so then we need to do the next step. We look at 2, we're getting... 28 times 41, 35. Check the table up there, no 35. For 3, we multiply 35 by 41, and we, ah, nice, we're getting 4. So we have a match here. The 4 in the table for the i's at i equals 2, and the table for the j's at j equals 3. Now that means, well, it says that an algorithm, if you have a match, then you see what the secret key is. So we now have to write our a as i plus jm. And in this case, well, i is 2, j is 3, m was 7. And so we're getting, obviously, Alice had chosen 23. Well, we could have guessed that, right? Um, but this also works if you can't guess it. And in any case, whenever you get a, a candidate discrete log or a candidate anything attack result, you should always verify that this is the correct number. So in this case, the verification shows that yes, um, two to the thirty-three is actually uh, two to the twenty-three is actually thirty-three, and so we have correct uh, successfully broken Alice's key. 